I'm Dilara Salahova, and this is the Sustain, Change and Grow podcast, your source of knowledge and inspiration for sustainable habits. As we live, we generate waste. In most developed countries, the generated waste is separated from us. We don't see it. We put it in a trash container and we forget about it. Most people tend not to throw stuff in the nature or in the streets. And if some do, municipalities work quite efficiently to clean it. But we do generate a lot of waste. In most developed countries, each person is responsible for up to 1.5 kilograms of waste per day. And in some countries, it is even more. While some waste is recycled, the biggest chunk of it is not. And a lot of waste ends up in landfills, thus damaging environment by intoxicating water and emitting greenhouse gases, among other consequences. Developing and low-income countries produce less waste, up to one kilogram of waste per day per person. But the problem there is even worse. Due to the absence of inefficient waste management, absence of facilities and lack of awareness of the problems, a lot of waste ends up in the streets of small towns, in countryside and on the beaches. Waste is also burned directly by the population, which leads to even worse environmental and health issues. With today's guest, Suksavol Kyotimchan, we will discuss questions related to waste and waste management in Laos, a beautiful country in Southeast Asia. The country is in development and still largely relies on agriculture. Suksavo Kyotim Chan is a founder of Zero Waste Laos organization that aims to promote sustainable waste management in Laos and to advance environment and sustainable development objectives. Suksavoy worked previously as a senior associate for solid waste management with Global Green Growth Institute or GGGY in Laos. Suksavoy has multiple years of experience in waste management and also holds a master's degree in environmental engineering and management from Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand. Suksavoy, a warm welcome to the Sustain, Change and Grow podcast. Uh, let's start with the problem itself. So, what is the problem with the waste and on what type of waste uh, you are focusing your efforts? Here in Laos, waste management is a big problem because of um, many areas, for example, um, infrastructure, facility, including transportation of waste or collection of waste and uh, facility that we, we treat the waste. You know, some, some of the provinces, we even don't have a proper or sanitary landfill. So another problem is about the awareness of the of the um communities or citizens uh, and including that our um law and regulations is not very um enforced the community so it's it's quite become big problem. So we might see with allow in the country, including the city or even the remote area so that's that's why we are trying to work and help um um everyone or uh, to to solve this problem so the waste that we focus is about the municipal solid waste um solid waste and also organic waste that we try to do yes so uh, it's essentially about all the trash that we see uh, in, in the nature, in the yes. on the streets. Uh, yes, uh, yes, you, you might see it already. Everywhere. Yeah, and the and all the the burnings, right? That that's happening yes, when people yes. try to. Right. That's also it. another area that we try to um, focus to help people understand the impact and also stop burning. Is this pr- uh, problem specific to rural areas or you see the same problem in the cities, like in the capital and the uh, Luang Prabang? And... I think it's everywhere. It's, it's very common to people to burn the, the trust or the waste because in the past, we don't have much plastic um, combined with the 
garden waste or organic waste, right? But right now, people just put all the waste and burn even grass or even can. Yeah. Do you attribute to this problem precisely to the fact that people just are used to burn the waste, but the nature of waste has changed? And so now they keep doing the same practice, but uh, the the problem is is bigger because they um, they're burning plastic and other uh, toxic elements. Yes, you're right. Because for example, it's also re- related to economic growth and the um the use of how people consume products. For example, in in the past, um, we don't have much. Uh, plastic or other type of waste but nowadays many products many goods that um, provide even in the past we don't have the food delivery right so people uh, have the amounts of it in the past might not have large amount of waste right this so people might just have okay the uh, organic waste that might be a very uh, big portions in the waste composition but right now all type of waste still like put together and it's become bigger bigger in the past the waste amount is not big like this but right now it's become bigger and a lot so but people still like try to manage in their own way that they used to do the the life has changed by people attitude didn't there is much more waste the the waste is more dangerous but people still tend to behave in the same way they used to for centuries right they also lack of um awareness mm-hmm. and are there yeah. like the government or the most municipalities provide the necessary facilities like where people can bring their waste uh, or this is also part of the problem that the people actually don't know how to get rid of the waste. Yes, yeah, so um, in many uh, provinces or many uh, city of Laos, the government also tried to put effort to to solve this problem, but still it's, a, it's not like in the center and we need a lot of... Uh, capacity to do that you know for that so um there is some effort from the government of course but still need more because this problem is not just only um the problem of the government have to handle but it's need the the understanding the cooperation uh from everyone in the society to to aware and to understand as well so basically what you're saying is that the government or the communities, the municipalities, they're ready to provide the facilities, but they need to be met halfway by the people to start uh, doing their job and uh, sorting the waste and throwing it in the right place instead of burning yes. and throwing yes. it away. Just uh, Right, and- right. So, for example, right now, the problem is also we don't have enough facility, like... Um, the track for waste corrections or the proper system for waste management in some of the provinces. So uh, in some area, it's just managed by the uh, family business that provide the service, you know. But we need more than just mm-hmm. only facility. So we need uh, the raw and regulations to be strong enough. And we also need awareness for the people to understand Yes, but I think without any of right. this, let's see, it, it cannot be sustained. It's going to be the same problem replicated like this. Right. And um, yeah, well, I totally agree that uh, people have to be aware of the problem and they have to change their behavior. And that's what uh, you and the Zero Waste Laos are focusing very much and that I really like is that you are trying to bring this awareness and to yes. change people's behavior, right? So right. can you tell more about what you're doing? So uh, since we we understand and we realize what are the issues that what we have to do, so our capacity, for example, Zero Waste Lao, even though we cannot provide facility or we cannot uh, force to have the uh, strong role or, or regression, but what we try to do is about lessening awareness. I think this is the um, very um, 
important as well to have people understand how its impact to their health, to their uh, environment, or even to their economics when they don't manage their waste proper. Yes, so I think um, we try to do as much as we can, and also more than that, we also try to um, being the support from the Roman partner to the remote area to set up the recycling or to set up the composting that they can reduce uh, burning garbage. They can uh, use the compost and also reduce the amount of waste generated. Yes, that is what we, we try to do. Can you maybe um, provide some details of uh, your exact actions, uh, how you raise awareness? We have quite a lot of channels that we raise awareness. For example, uh, we are the events, in-person event or campaign that we conduct in uh, provinces or even in city. We try to have not only about waste, but also about climate change as well. So we we have youth leader that we try to build the capacity. So when they understand the problem, they also conduct the awareness campaign in the events or where we organize the, the event. And more than that, we also have, right now we have 80 members of Zero Isla who contribute to raising awareness via social media. So everyone contribute their contents that, okay, they want to uh, have people understand about this problem. So for example, our team, uh, one person, we have uh, like three contents to to post on the our social media to get people to understand. So that means every, every member or, or in our team, Zero West Laude, they contribute to raise awareness as well. This is how we do, because right now, uh, social media uh, and- is, it's very uh, common and people use a lot, right? So it also can help us to uh, access to many people and also we don't need big budget to do that, yeah. Is social media really an important source of changing the behavior? Uh, are you targeting the young people? So they, they change yes. their behavior and they bring it to yeah. them. Right. So I, I see okay. that is is quite weird because we target to the young people. You know that in Laos we have sixty percent of young people, young population. I have very strong belief that to make the change, these are the group that I'll target, and we cannot do anything with adults. I mean, <laughs> it's it's not easy to change the behavior. So I think better to target the young people because it's their future, and I think it's they're also more open to understand the problem and change. Do you collaborate with schools? Sure, we collaborate with school and also um, Department of Education and Sport in seven provinces so far. Yeah, we also um, get advice from uh, Minister of Education that, okay, how to start because for us, we're not necessarily working alone, but we believe in the partnership we cannot do things um, alone. So we work with private sector, we work with uh, ministry, for example, uh, Monle Ministry of Environment, Natural Resources and Environment and Education, yes, and also private sector and also the uh, government partners, yeah. And, and how is your collaboration with the government? Because uh, from... Uh activists in other countries i have heard that uh, it, it is very often uh, very disappointing and they're not uh, taken seriously what is your experience for us i think um we're quite lucky that um we we receive the support from the government um, sometimes it's not about uh, the fund or the the budget support, but it's more like they screen to support, to join our event or even try to give us advice. Yes, I think uh, we have quite good support from the government of Laos, especially from uh, Monle, yes. Because in this area, we need more people to work in this area, to raise awareness. So 
why we, we already here, we willing to, to support, to raise awareness, to speed information, to get people to understand. So that means we, we have the same goal, the same vision that we want to do that to have our country to be greener and to have a beautiful nature. So I think that's why uh, we have um, the support for many uh, partner and including government. Okay, and and the government also recognizes the problem with the waste uh, and has uh, uh, an interest and uh, a, a program to uh, to solve it. Yes, yes, yes. The government out loud, especially uh, Ministry of Natural Resources. They see this is very big problem that they have to tackle to solve the problem. Yes, so that's why right now, um, for example, plastic waste and government out loud, they see that okay, it's a big problem. That's why, um, I also involved in the developing of national plastic action plan. Soon the um Monle also plan to set up the, the strategy for waste management in Laos. So probably after a uh, plastic action plan. So this is so that they also uh, start to see this is a big problem that we have to, to solve. But to solve this problem, but we need to have a clear action what we are going to do. Yeah. You know, uh, it reminded me uh, the past Soviet Union. So I, I'm uh, from Russia, and I remember in the Soviet Union, the cleaning and the waste management was one of the main programs, the, the national level programs. And we would have every, I think it's every uh, month, one Saturday was called Subotnik. So it was cleaning Saturday. And so mm -hmm. people would meet and for two, three hours, they would uh, clean the area where they live. And uh, that was a sort of socialization, but also cleaning effort. And also there was a, a other actions there. There was the action for a recycling. So you, they collected bottles, uh, metal, uh, uh, paper, etc. So like it was really a national program of doing it. Uh, is there something like this that uh, you are doing or maybe the government is doing? Um, so for clean up activity, especially in in many parts of the country, they also do every uh, like Saturday morning in once a month in uh, some of the village. So when I uh, visit the village or work with the village, uh, I I see this uh, activity often uh, happen, but not uh, not not it's it's like the the local initiative, you know, but mm -hmm. probably it's also. Um, I mean, suggest by the the central serial that to 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 do it up. But this is already um like exist since I was a kid as well. That I see okay every uh Saturday, but it's not really uh like I mean always happen. So probably there is some important day, but some of the some of the uh relays they also still have this every. Saturday of the last week, something like that. Because mm -hmm. I remember I, I went to work with one of the relays or two relays that they have this activity. Because I think as soon as you have to clean it up, you will think twice before throwing it away. So True. I think that's a very good way of raising awareness. Right, right. Uh, you, you mentioned that this problem with plastic and packaging and the uh, is there an initiative about reducing this packaging and plastic? Because I see it's massive. So again, it's related to the to awareness to uh, people if they understand. And also, so in terms of the, the actions or initiative, right now, as I mentioned, that the National Plastic Action Plan is, is under developing and hopefully we uh, finalize it soon. So with this, um, the the next action, I think we will see many more action that happening. But right now, we also also have some uh, initiative, for example, plastic filler that they work with business that try to um, encourage them to to use their 
environmental friendly product in the cafe or in the hotels. Some of the shopping mall, yes, them supermarket, they also try to do a little bit. But I think after we have the the impact, I think we will see more action and with also the regulation or in, and enforcement. Yeah, and you're also uh, focusing on other sustainable development objectives, right? Uh, on the yes. uh, also on the climate change and the, right. what what do you do there? So we work with young people. Climate action. We call our program it just climate action. So what we do uh, in 2021, we start raising awareness to engage young people to, to understand the problem. And then from 2022 until 2025, we have the clear target that, okay, this is the year of the action together with awareness. We will work to plan three in school. Yeah, last year we already planned eight thousand two hundred trees in seven point three hundred sixty schools and that's a fruit tree so it will give nutrient is uh, nutrition is also um, awareness and climate action so like one question that uh, i ask myself very often low income families have a lot of uh, problems to solve on the everyday basis how can they handle on top of this uh, the, this environmental problems and uh, to think about okay, waste management, uh, climate change, changing their behavior, etc. Like how how do you perceive it? Uh, do people resist it? Do they think it's uh, too much? Some they also concern when I work with them, right? With the people in the uh, gas routes, railways. But if we work with the uh, a vendor, they will they will not think too much. They will just only try to think how if they can sell things and help save their costs, have the use of very um, low product. I mean that can give them more benefit. But if we ask them, okay, if you care about environment, so some people if okay, they so much is still hungry, but they you are telling them to things about saving the planet. So, but they will think about, okay, what can I have to eat first, right? Mm-hmm. That's why um, I think it requires a lot of um, awareness or not just only one single time that we have to work with them. So we need to always provide them information and also uh, get them to understand. And sometimes we have to understand their problem as well. And how to connect? Yes, it. right. So you basically you you're trying to connect the getting out of poverty and uh, and and growth with the essentially sustainable growth. So doing the uh, well, if doing agriculture, doing it more sustainably. Yes. Like if, yes. yeah, uh, doing agriculture, but at the same time trying to protect the forest and the wildlife and the. Right. Right. So uh, when we conduct campaign or listening awareness, we try to have them to understand, okay, um, we can have it right now. For example, you can have something, for example, agriculture, but things about next five year, 10 year, if you keep doing the same practice that you do, you will even like fishing or even agriculture, you know, use a lot of chemicals and pesticides. So if you are doing like this at the end, next 10 years or five years, you will have a row and row of the, the deals or the product that you can get. More than that, you will get a problem in your health or in your uh, communities or even get the impact from climate change. So we try to help them to understand about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts about the burning practice? Because uh, this is uh, everywhere around the, the at least the northern part, mm-hmm. and it's it's very polluting, and uh, it's probably also not very healthy for the uh, well for the environment and for the soil. Yes, uh, yes. This is a another big problem that all, all only happened during the 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 dry season or harvesting season. You know that people try to um like restart the new season of plantings of or 
vegetable or uh, growing rice. So it's easy for them, like just burn. So they need to, don't do it, they don't need to uh, use a lot of rainbows to clear the land. So they just think like that. And I think maybe sometimes they think that, okay, it's good for shoy, but this is not true for for them. So this, I think this problem have to be solved. But with that, we also need the, the strong enforcement and also the alternative solution for them. Not just only the solution, but it could uh, have the facility that they could bring their, their garden ways or agriculture ways to do something instead of just burn it. So I think this problem is not just only in Laos, but mostly in Southeast Asia, including Thailand, northern part of Thailand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, uh, and uh, I think you're totally right. If we want to solve a problem, there should be an alternative solution, because uh, if they uh, there is nothing they can do with the with the waste that they they even collect. Yeah, right. It's similar to there's nothing the waste. they can do with uh, by to solve this. Right. Uh, and uh, when uh, like actually getting back to the waste. So what does uh, uh, the uh, what do the municipalities do with the waste? Uh, is it essentially the landfills? Is it the, the uh, incineration factories? Uh, where does the waste go? Ila maybe fifty uh, percent of many province. I mean, fifty um, percent of the province Ila that they have landfills, but the less um, they have, but it's not really a uh, good practice. I mean, so most of the waste go to landfill. And I see that only in urban city like Vientian or Sawanake or some of the urban area that they have the like recycling facilities. Yes, but overall, the maybe 80, 90% go to landfills mm-hmm. because we don't have the uh, waste separation system or even collection system, it's already hard to, to, to have. On your website, you, you mentioned that you also do research or you plan to do research. Yes. So can you, can you say some words about it? When we, when we have the project, right, we know more we conduct the survey, the research to understand. For example, lately we have a research that about the climate change and also informal way speaker. We interview them, we um, survey, conduct a survey and understand what are the issues, what are the challenges and what we can help them about um, improving their livelihood. Yes. So probably um, maybe in few months, we, we will release some of the, the research soon. We we have information about that in our website. Do you collaborate also with the universities, local universities on, on this or it's... No, no, but we have students to join us, but not really for more conduct, uh, join the research with them. So our team, we have from university, like the young people, f- uh, faculty as well. Yes, but not really for more joining, but soon maybe in the near future, we will have that collaboration now you mentioned that there are 80 people in your team right yes that's uh, just the permanent staff and then you have uh, uh, also many volunteers core team we have 40 and the the volunteer we call support team we have about 40 yes okay so it's 80 people permanent plus volunteers yes so actually um we also receive um, many core and interest for many people that they want to be a volunteer, but actually we we call for volunteer once a year. So uh, when we open for the core, for example, last time we just opened for ten days. One eighty people submit the application to be the member, but we see only um like twenty or thirty. Yeah. So I okay. try to encourage them to join our activity or to, yeah, so then they become the member of Zero Waste Law in the future. And so what do, do volunteers do? And for how long do they stay with you? Oh, many of them since beginning, you know. And I would say 80%, 90% still 
Sin, we, we just start the first event, but right now they're still with us. Even they, they got the job, or get the work, or where you were, but they try to spend their spare time with us. I mean, over the weekend or when we have activity. Yes. So for volunteer, uh, let's say core team, they involve in the action plan, develop the plan. For example, this year what we will do, that means in December they, we, we have different team, like they have to work and then they will plan together. Okay, we will do this activity and then I'm the one that support them to review. Okay, this is possible and have the deal and okay, or maybe sustainable then okay I help them to try to get funding and implement their idea and the support team they they come to support when we implement the event yes the, the, the campaign or the project okay so vol- volunteers they work on a, not on a permanent basis but when the, uh, something is happening like when there yes. is an event they're coming but not permanently working with right. you Right, because we 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 work with young people and most of them they are students. So their mm-hmm. major time is going to study, but they also try to put their efforts and their time for working together. Where does your funding come from? Like uh, to support forty people team? That's uh, that's really serious. So um, we have from um, many development partner, including EU. Um, Norwegian people aid. We used to have funding from UK as well. You see, is it one short donations or it's a, a regular donations that you receive? So uh, some of them regular, but some of them also based on the event or the concept that we propose to them. But we okay. plan when we plan to have a longer project that we can have the support. And how do you build these partnerships? I think there are many activists who would be very much interested in, in your experience because you have a long list. You know, if we, let's say, if we knock 10 doors, might have one or two doors open for us, right? And we, if we keep on, okay, we have idea, we action, we make impact, for sure. Next time we knock the door again, they will welcome to support us. So I think at the end, we have to let them see that this is what we will do. Let them know that we have this person. We, we, anyhow, we, we will do this. Maybe sometimes we don't, we don't even need to get funding, but sometimes in kai support is also important, you know. So it could be, okay, this time you have in kind support, they come to participate and see, enjoy your event or your project. And next time they might be your funder. So basically you have uh, a person, uh, like a contact person who would regularly contact the, the uh, different organizations and uh, ask for support or it's, for funding and provide information. It's, it's you. <laughs> well, I was guessing it's you. <laughs> Yes. Okay, so uh, so when you started, by the way, how, how uh, can you tell your story, how you started? You know, I started Zero Waste Lab in 2019. I, I At that time, I had my full-time job. I just want to lay some my full, full-time job with GDGI, that's work in waste management sector as well. So I create a Facebook page called Zero Waste Lab. My attention at the time, I just want to raise awareness because I understand the problem. People very lack of awareness. They don't understand the problem. So I spend my spare time, two, three time per, uh, per week, like to, to make a poster content information to post on my Facebook page. And later on, the, the fact that I produce in, our content, so it's attract many people, like many organizations that they want to know who is Zero Waste Law. And then we start having activity together, campaign and move to have a longer project. Yes, and we have the bigger team, many young people want to join. Wow, <laughs> just from a posting from your personal interest, that's uh, that's really impressive. And, uh, but you have... Uh, a master in uh, waste management. Yeah? So, like uh, for you, it started much, much earlier. Yes. So can, yes. C- uh, can you go back, like really, where 
where the seed was uh, put in the in the ground. So, yes, my my background is our uh, waste management, right? I graduated in AAT, Asian Institute of Technology, Environmental Engineering and Management. So I after I graduated, I, I worked with TTI and then I start create Facebook page. And then after two, three years, many young people want to join to become member of the team. And then okay, let's have call team. So you know why we we attack too many young people and why they are very interested to join our team because they not just only uh, like contribute to to less awareness they also have freedom to express their idea to work to develop the plan to gain experience to learn new skills to prepare for working in the near future to learn about soft skill and we also provide the support for them to go and learn more so it means we also work in the youth development at the same time. Mm-hmm. So you are really empowering the volunteers yeah. and your team members to, right. to do their own actions. And so how do you do it? Like, uh, 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 how, how do you provide to, the support? Having them to, to join the team, give them opportunity to uh, to to um to learn or even you know how how also one program that I I try to set up is every month we plan to have one session that for our team member that invite expert from different area that they can vote first okay what topic that they are interested among the team and then they invite those expert to conduct a session for capacity building or share or actions. Because something that they cannot learn from the classroom is only need uh, to learn from experience or from working. That's how we we have them build the capacity. So uh, once what once a week you invite an external no, no, expert no, no. on a, a month, specific a topic month. that is of interest for the team. A month. A month. A month. Yes. What what are the uh, activities that you have with the team to develop the, the capacity for example when we invite the expert right we 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 have them to for example the the soft skill we conduct teamwork uh training uh coordination skills uh even uh communication skills also like media for example um how to uh, post or how to develop the conduct the research. Let's say even the the co- po- produce content is also one skill that can help them to to develop. Mm-hmm. You know, for example, they have to do research. They have to know how to use the reference. They have to know how to co- uh, make the poster or the graphic that very attractive and very nice. This also all the skill that. They, they can learn also when we Absolutely. we have the the session I invite expert to join okay they it can be probably speaking skill or it can be a time management skill or others a technical skill like even waste management or climate change or photograph or making video it's also all the skills Okay, so you're really covering very large areas. So it's not only technical skills, but it's also soft skills. And, right, uh, yes, very much uh, in soft skills as well. Very, very interesting. I think that would be very interesting for many other people as well, uh, how, how to grow the team. Uh, where did you learn all of this? Yeah, I think this one I learned from like through Zero Waste Law as well as Sound from TTI. But when we were... We, we face the challenge or any problem and how we can have a team that have good capacity. For example, we have clear vision, mission that we want to do. But if only me or two people in the team have that capacity to do, then how about others, right? So we want to move fast, grow big. We have to heal each other, leave no one behind. Then it's heal mm-hmm. the world more faster. And when people yeah. understand in the same visions, don't have much different skill or mindset. So, well, I can imagine that the, uh, this this learning uh, and the empowerment provides uh, 
a lot of uh, uh, motivation and energy and and attracts a lot of people to to the organization right and this gggi which is the green gr global green growth institute uh, yeah. what is this so um i work with gggi in 2019 and then i uh, finished my job there in 2022, May last year. So I worked on Westminster sector as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in, in Laos as well. Yes, in Laos. But, uh, what is the focus of this institute? Is it more like research? So they develop the project and implement some of the project that in waste, climate change, and also in wastewater management. Uh, do you already observe climate change related problems? Yes, especially in remote area or sensitive area, like northern part or southern part of Laos. Because I work with um, people in the community, I ask them how often it's flood, as it said, it said almost every year. So it's already the impact and some part of the of Laos is already like drought in some of the season. Was your experience at the, the GGGI uh, uh, helpful for you to build relationships with partners and knowing how to get in touch with them, how to uh, how to work with them? Mm, I think this one because when I work with TGI, mostly I I work with the uh, like um not really partner, you know, so just with the school or with the one or two um a stakeholder that that I already focus, but for with zero waste law, I think. They know for they know us from action that we did. So many of them they reach out to us, not not even know that I have my full time job before. When they know that I work, uh, have my full time job, that they surprised that okay you have your full time job, but you also could done this much with zero waste love. So I would say that um, they they contact via zero waste love, but not not really um. To my period job. So uh, the the first uh, uh, partners or donors, they they came to you. Uh, it was not you who started looking for them. Yeah, most most of them. Uh, and do you think that fun fundraising is a skill that you had to learn? Again, just because uh, you're doing great job that the people are coming by themselves. I think this one fundraising is also a skill that I learned to zero waste law. I I have the belief that we need to we need to go with seed, not need. I mean we have something, we have idea, we have passions, we have the team. This is our seed that we have. And then we go to propose to the daughter how we can go this seed if they're willing to support, you know. Not just only go and ask for mm -hmm. okay, we want this, want that, but okay what we have, what we can do. That's also something mm -hmm. I think is, is important. Not just only go, okay, we want this, we want to do this, but okay, what you have done, what you can do. So you, you go with already something concrete uh, and tangible. So why do you think that, uh, there, there is so much interest uh, in, in this project by uh, uh, foreign organizations, like uh, by what you are doing? Because you have mostly uh, international partners, right? First, because we work with young people, not just only about mm -hmm. waste management, but also climate change, but also youth development. And also the area that we work is a big problem that everyone wants to help to solve. And it's also the priority of the government or the uh, social economic development plan of the government. So when development partner, they come to Laos, they also help Lao or support Lao based on the economic development plan of the government, right? So this is the priority area of the government and also become priority of the sustainable development as well. Uh, and uh, can you name uh, some of your biggest uh, donors, or like uh, the, your biggest partners? We have EU, we have Norwegian People Aid. I think this year we have many big donors. <laughs> A uh, private sector that reach out to us, they want to support. Yes, in the past, 
we have two that was Coca Cola, and also we have Namton two that the big hydro power plant. And this year we are under discuss with Aran, the insurance company. Not just only the the development partner, but right now including private sector. And we also under discuss with government as well that they want to fund us for some of the activity. Do you consider their own actions sustainable and helping the? Uh... Uh, reduce packaging and reduce uh, or like uh, improve waste management etc like are they really doing this uh, work like the work which is dependent on the activity uh, as uh, like properly and uh, they're not just kind of using you and helping uh, to, by helping you some sort of greenwashing like doing badly their own business but then claiming okay we're supporting this uh, uh, mm-hmm. NGO and uh, like we are doing great job here. Yes, this fund I think we also in very much collaborate in the past, but I see that they also have the target that they want to reduce the packaging. For sure, it cannot be done over one or two year. It's it's also a lot of investment or changing, right? Probably they can target to change step by step. And even though collecting back or recycling, they cannot done it by themselves. So that means they need partner, they need many stakeholders that they can fund and support. But in the meantime, they also have to work within their company or the factory to change something to reduce the packaging or to collecting back or to change to reduce as much as they can. So I see that they have the, the target, yeah. the mission, but let's see, because that's uh, like, let's see, 2025 or 30. So this is a long mission. Their target is for 2030? Yes, yes. To, I heard that almost 100% collecting back but let's see how they can um, do. But I think, of course, it's need partnership. They need to work with many actors. Yeah. Do they have the uh, like intermediary targets? Maybe uh, 50% have, by 2025? Yeah, they, they have 2025, they, they have. Just to clarify, so the idea is really to collect the back all the whatever bottles that they sold, right? So to, to bring it back. Yeah. Is there a piece of advice that you would like to give to other activists in the, in other countries uh, based on your experience? We need to make a clear plan what what we want to do, what we want to achieve. Making a goal or target is very important. And then build your team, have a good team, try to have people who have the same mission for same visions and working together with everyone is not easy. We need to get them to understand that this is our goal. So with, ta- with the care goal, nothing can obstruct us from moving forward to solve, to go, to achieve our goal. And in the same time, I think, uh, keep belief on that we can do, we can make a change and keep inspire people and yeah never discourage the team member that's also very important also listen and also try to build partnership collaborate with many people as much as we can because at the end of the day i i always believe that on the way of success is not only me or you it's about we we is it it not mean only our team, but it mean many people in the society. Do you have moments when you feel uh, like you don't have any power? The problem is so big and you just want to, you know, lower your hands and say like, I don't know. I never let myself, myself feel down so long because, for example, when I face any problem or meet with people that are so difficult, I try to understand them. Like, oh, why they become like this or why this cannot be done or yeah. So trying to understand our other perspective, it really help us to not upset or disappointed that can make our energy feel low. And one thing that 
I try to always keep my energy high. Is I have garden, so I always use my garden to relax, relax, and yeah, get a good energy from nature, from gardening. I can only agree with what you are saying. That it's very important to understand the the other side. That uh, the things the they are as they are uh, for a reason because yeah. people have certain beliefs so there, there is certain reason behind people doing it and it's very important to understand the other side to and to find the common agreement yeah how do you feel we need globally uh, around the, uh, the globe we need to, people to change their behavior we need them to be more respectful to the nature to, to, to stop throwing away the waste to, to uh, stop well, reduce eating meat, uh, to reduce carbon emissions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, it is very difficult to change the uh, people's behavior. Uh, but from your experience, uh, do you have hope, uh, like maybe uh, uh, certainty, that uh, this is possible and this is feasible, and uh, you you see the results of people changing their behavior? Yeah. So um, for me, what I try to uh, tell people very simple it you know try to reduce your carbon footprint or save your carbon footprint it's about save your money you know we not consume much that's mean you save your money we not travel much or it's mean you save your money and also at the same time it's about how you can have the good environment for yourself it's not about saving the the planet. Yeah, it is, but we have to try to connect to them very close so that they understand. For example, we talk about throwing the garbage. We have to make them think it can come back to them, to uh, food value chains or microplastic. So get them to see this is very effect to themselves. That that is can can help, and then oh, they realize, you know. And people think, okay, they want to save their money, right? Mostly. It's quite helps when we raise awareness. So you relate a global problem with the very specific problem of each person that the, the, this yeah. person can really understand and would like to to to, to solve. Right. We cannot like okay. tell the Great. people in the community, oh, you have to redo your carbon footprint. You know that climate change, but just let them help them understand this okay just save your money try to grow your own food try to not use too much fuel go with your bicycle save your water save your electricity save your money that's it and then the last question uh, what are your two most inspiring books like what gave you this strength and the uh, uh, push to to start it and uh, and keep going you know I plan to be a good leader, but it's never happened. <laughs> I bought many books, but but I never lead yet. <laughs> so simple. <laughs> but, but I like to listen. Um, I like to listen. Like what is his name? It's more about affirmation and or inspiring from YouTube that I listen almost every day. Um, to set up our mind to. To see good thing in any situation, to not anyone influence our emotion or our feeling, to have the clear target, clear clear goal, and how to communicate and how even to manage our time. I I, I usually listen from YouTube mostly. So you're yeah, really the new generation, uh, <laughs> not books but the YouTube and the. Uh... And listening to the inspiring, uh, yeah. <clears throat> inspiring speeches and, uh, and lectures. I hope I can inspire or share my my experience and can tell other people that when they want to do something, they just start doing nothing too much. It was a pleasure to talk to Suksavoy. I found her story truly inspiring, starting from a Facebook page. Zero Waste Lao has grown to 80 members in only four years. Waste management is a big and complex problem where multiple actors have to play their part in order to guarantee clean and healthy environment for all. 
Governments have to provide regulation, facilities and law enforcement measures. Industry has to provide technical solutions, while people have to play by the rules and throw waste in bins and not in the nature. Suk Savoy and her team endeavored in a very important task of raising awareness of the population and particularly the youth to solve the problem. And they are rightfully supported by the government and international organizations. What I particularly like about Suk Savoy's approach is her eagerness to listen and try to understand people, their problems and thus their behavior. This is key to implement and long-lasting change and make people adhere to a new attitude. I also like how Suk Savoy builds her team based on empowerment and freedom for self-realization. I wish Suk Savoy and Zero Waste Lao success in their project and hope to see Lao truly zero waste very soon. I hope you enjoyed this conversation and found it as inspiring as I did. As usual, subscribe to the podcast, put a like to the episode and contact me at sccrowpodcast in one word at gmail.com if you want to share your opinion. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.